Hey everybody, Ben Fadden here, Talking Friars, and I'm with a special guest. I've been waiting for this uh, for uh, this whole week. Veronica Stone, who is going to be a star player on the San Diego Mojo, the new women's volleyball team coming to the town. They're already going to be in town here this week, later this week. Uh, Vieira Arena is going to be their home arena, and I can't wait to see this team in action. Veronica, thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. All right, so before we get started, fans, by the way, you can get your tickets, sandiegomojovb.com. All the information is going to be in the description. It's in the little ticker down here on the YouTube side of things. Uh, first question. So I know training camp starts, I think, on Sunday. Players are going to be coming in. But you've been on this team or known that you're going to be on this team now for a while. What was your reaction when you were first named to this team? You knew you were going to be joining. And did it give you more confidence that this was going to be the right move for you, knowing that Kerry Walsh Jennings was going to be the owner of it? Um, and then your coach as well, Taiba Hineev Park, was going to be a part of it. Yeah, those are all bonuses to what I already thought was an amazing franchise to be a part of. And then just hearing the names continue, Taiba and then Dietra as well, just surrounded by greatness. I'm a Californian, so being able to play in my home state and have my family and friends be able to support is huge and something I never thought would be able to happen. But yeah, when I was first joining the league, I was working just with player relations, trying to figure out which girls, recruiting girls, seeing who was interested in the league. And then once names for teams started coming out and I heard California, I was like, oh, I want to go to California. And I'm glad that it worked out and I'm glad I'm here. Yeah, California is definitely the best. Um, you grew up, obviously, in an athletic family. Your father, former pro bowler. Your brother played Washington State. Another sister with you at Oregon. Um, did you always know that you wanted to play volleyball professionally? Um, yeah, not always. At first, I was playing basketball. And I thought basketball was, was going to do it for me. And then I played volleyball. I loved it. I loved the team. Basketball is a team sport too, but I love the energy um, coming together after each point. That makes me really happy and how you can express yourself on the court. And so once I started playing, I was like, okay, I want to go to college for this. I didn't know about pro yet. And by the time I got to like my senior year of high school, I was like, I want to continue and playing. And at the time it was only you graduate, you go overseas. So I went to France. And now with Pro Volleyball Federation being announced, I jumped at the opportunity to play in the States. Yeah, like the perfect scenario. Because people yeah. don't, I don't know if everyone knows that. Like, yeah, there was no big league before that here in America. So people had to go overseas to play. Um, and that's mm -hmm. sometimes not the best uh, environment for, for players in terms of just being comfortable where they're at. Um, yeah, exactly. What are, what other sports are you into? Obviously, with your family, with Jordan Love, who yeah. <laughs> not a big fan of right now. I, my family is a Minnesota Vikings. They're Minnesota Vikings fans. Uh, I have yeah. family in Minnesota. And <laughs> when the Chargers left, they leave. They go to LA. There was no way I was going to be rooting for the Chargers anymore. So I hopped on with the Vikings. And yeah, this past week that was not fun to watch. It was so exciting for me <laughs> to yeah, watch. And now they're in a win and in situation, which is double exciting. I can't wait to watch. I'm sad that I can't be there in person, but I'll be cheering him on. But yeah, the athletics has been huge. My sport growing up, we I was always watching basketball. Um, I was playing it. I was watching it. Loved we had season tickets to Warriors games. And so I was always there. And then I started, I mean, my dad, yeah, he played in the NFL for 13 years, but I didn't really start watching or learning about football until I was at Oregon. And probably my sophomore, junior year is when I started getting into it more. And I was like, okay, this is a cool sport. And then dating Jordan. Now I'm like fully in. I'm like, PI, yeah. PI, like <laughs> the yeah. flag. Yeah, I mean, I, I just see online like Packers fans love you and your reactions so to the team and all that. Uh, but yeah, that was not a great experience for me. But I know that was an amazing, great game for you um, yeah. being on the other side of things. Um, why? Let's let's go to Oregon. I'm a big Oregon fan. I didn't go to Oregon. I'm mm -hmm. actually wearing Sabrina ones right now. Oh, um, nice. Why? Why Oregon? And what did you? learn there um, that has helped you in your career so far? 
I wanted to play at a competitive school and the Pac-12 RIP, oh my gosh, it makes me sad, was, <laughs> is one of the best conferences for volleyball. And so when I was going through my recruiting process and talking to these schools, when I went to Oregon and I met the girls, and I think it's really important for girls who are getting recruited, talk to the girls that you will be playing with. I think sometimes girls will talk to the juniors and seniors, but they're going to be gone by the time you get there. So I, I really enjoyed meeting the girls that I would be playing with. And I had a really great relationship with now the head coach who was the assistant coach at the time. But I wanted to be at a school that wasn't just a football school or it's a basketball school. I wanted a school that was competitive in all the sports. I, and Oregon is that, it's the epitome of competitiveness. I yep. think it's football, women's basketball, men's basketball. When I got there, I think our golf team had won a national championship and then track of course, but yeah, I loved that it was such a small but like tight knit community. Our athletics department was super close. Everyone supported everyone. We all went to each other's games and um, learning. I think the biggest thing I learned were just relationships and building and keeping them. The connections that I've made at Oregon have helped me through college and past college. They, I was able to job shadow Maria Taylor when I was at ESPN. I told them I was interested in journalism. They gave got me a YouTube bowling show, 10 frames with Veronica, and I was yeah. able to interview other athletes um, during my time there. And so they are just so supportive of their athletes and they want to see you grow. And so I think just making those connections, keeping those connections and just furthers you in the future. Yeah, if anyone goes and checks out that video, she actually <laughs> interviewed Sabrina and the competitive yeah. spirit definitely came out in both of them. You won, right? Yeah, I, I think I only won. lost once. Yeah. and. They cheated, so it was fine. <laughs> See, there you go. Yeah. Um, have you learned anything from Jordan or other members of your family that has also helped you in your career now? Or are you are you kind of making it clear to Jordan and everyone like you're the teacher? It's not it's not the other way around. I think we learn a lot from each other. Uh we're very similar in how we are, I think leadership wise, maybe I I might be a little more outgoing uh and talkative but we have similar mindsets and i've learned a lot from him just seeing his process like right when he gets home he is watching film he is and i always joke around with him I'm like you just spent hours at the facility playing ball with the boys and now you're coming back home and you're watching yourself play ball with the boys but like <laughs> it's all a joke and he works so hard and watching what he does day in and day out and it motivates me to want to work harder. I think it's really hard in the off season. That's the hardest part about being an athlete is when you have to do that work on your own. You don't have the team around you. And so being in Green Bay during the off season and seeing what he's doing every day, like makes me not want to be like, okay, well I'm on the couch. Let me continue watching TV. Like let me get up and get active. And so we, we talk a bunch about what makes us better, what we think like during the team, I think he, yeah, he just has a really steady mind and we help each other a lot. That's awesome. So I work for San Diego Wave FC. They're the women's soccer team in town. I'm mm -hmm. curious, have you, I mean, because their team has broke records. They have been very, very successful in their first two seasons here. Have you been able to, or any of your teammates have been able to talk with any of these players to yeah. ask questions and learn about how you can grow your sport in your first season, getting this off the ground here? We haven't spoken enough about that. They came not all of them, but a handful came to our brand reveal. And we just talked about how amazing it is to have more women's sports in San Diego. And they were just talking about growing, I mean, their fandom and their fan base and how that was for them, but not enough. And I'm excited to go to one of their games and continue to learn about soccer because that's something I don't really know that much about. That's not one of the sports that I have watched but they have a lot of great athletes there. They have Olympians on their team as well. So it's, I think there's a lot of greatness in this city and I'm excited to see it continue to grow, but yeah, we definitely have to have more conversations with them. Who is your, from the brief time, like who is your favorite personality that you were able to meet there? I think Kaylin Sheridan was probably yeah, there. Kaylin. Yeah. Kaylin. Uh, I've talked to her the most and her wife now is a huge Packers fan. So we were able to <laughs> talk a little more, but um Kaylin, for sure, she's really the only one I've talked to one-on-one. -on -one. We spoke in a group setting. There was another, um, I forget her name, but she's from Northern California. It was just funny because I saw her and I was like, you look super familiar. Naomi Germer? 
I think so. Yeah. Okay. She was like, oh, I went to Pioneer. And I was like, oh my gosh, I went, our high schools were close. And I recognized her just from like Cal High Sports. We had our own little media thing in high school. And so she was on the Cal High Sports TV and I had seen her. It's just like small world. The sports world is so small, but. Yeah. They've got a lot of great personalities, a lot of great athletes, obviously. Um, have you set goals for 2024? Obviously the Olympics. Um, what, what goals do you have and what goals do you have for this team here? Uh, I'm excited to see. I like to take things like kind of game by game. I don't want to rush into anything. Of course, the goal is championship. I think that's always uh, what everyone wants. And But I'm excited about 2024. It's the year of the Tiger, 1998. So technically, it's, it's my year. And I think there's going to be a lot of great things. But I think just helping this league grow, uh, not only our team, but the league, I think we can really get something started here and get a lot of people behind us to rally behind us. I think viewership across the United States, not only just in person at home games, but watching us and streaming our games. They signed a deal with NBC Sports and hopefully there's more traction with that and they get more TV deals. But I think my biggest goal is just to grow, grow the sport and grow as a player, grow as a leader, grow as a person. And I think once you know work on your inner self, then the rest, I don't know, will unfold. And I, I'm just waiting to see, waiting and seeing what's going to come. If I worry about my growth and the growth of the team, I think so many great things can happen. How excited are you to be able to call Viejas Arena home here in 2024? Very I've never been. I've never okay. been. Uh, but even with, because I, again, I watch basketball, their men's basketball team. I forgot like how great they, they, they are. They were, yep. Yeah, the final four. And I mean, they're selling out their arena. And I hope those same fans can come and help us sell out. But no, I, I think there's a lot of history here. and. I'm just excited to learn more about it because this is all still new to me. Even though I'm a Californian, I feel like San Diego is, it's different. Everyone speaks about it. Like they put it on a pedestal. It's the most mm -hmm. beautiful city. It's not like that. It's slower than LA, but it's like beautiful and there's still a lot going on. So I'm excited to learn more. So when you were growing up or you probably have the same favorite sports teams now other than NFL mm -hmm. with the Packers, but what are your favorite <laughs> yeah. sports teams? Uh, I loved, my dad is from Boston. And so when I was growing up, he always had Celtics games on. But then once we were in California and I got to learn for myself, I still respect the Celtics, but love the Warriors. Um, and then for football, yes, by default, I am a Packers fan. I didn't really have an NFL team. It was always whatever team my dad was playing for. And then whatever teams he was playing for, if they were on TV, I'd be like, go Niners, go Cowboys. But now it's, yeah, it's definitely go Pack Go. Um, and then, yeah, I need to get more into soccer. Have not watched baseball. That's that's another sport I need to learn more about. And I know San Diego's big in baseball. Padres so. are big. Yep. Yeah. So I I need to go. I need to get to a baseball game. And then I love watching like the Grand Slams in tennis. Okay. Um, Coco Golf is amazing, but yes. just I love watching all the Grand Slams. It's they're in another life. I think I'm a tennis player. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you can obviously see the similarities between yeah. the two. Yeah. Um, okay. Some, some quick questions here to end. So you've been in San Diego, you were in San Diego a little bit, I know with you mm -hmm. and the team, what were your favorite food spots? If you were able to go to any. Ooh, when I came, we came here during uh, the bye week, Jordan's bye week. And I met with the GM and head coach. And they took us, I think it was called Costera. It was like a Mex like a really fancy Mexican restaurant, but it was bomb. And but I haven't had enough to be like, oh, and I love this place. California, in and out. I'll just yes, say that's, there we go. That's, that's what, what I was gonna ask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the lines are super long and you it's just gotta it. go in, no drive through. Sometimes you do the drive through, but yeah. yeah. The, it's it's really good. There's there's some in and out haters, which I don't really understand. Crazy. Yeah, we gotta hook you up with Padres Wave. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because the Wave has been great atmospheres, environment, and then Petco Park attendance records. So hopefully people will show up for San Diego Mojo, obviously. Um, just 
what who would be your favorite teammate so far like who are the, the Ooh, that's... stars alongside yourself i know you're gonna upset someone here oh my gosh i can't name a favorite teammate i played with four of them already so yeah. i can't name a favorite i'm excited um to play with them all again i think i'm most excited about playing with Nutsara tomcom i got to I think I was only on her team once during Athletes Unlimited, maybe once or twice, but she's such a dynamic setter. She's a magician on the court. And so, especially my position, I'm a middle and everyone always says like middles only get set on perfect balls. She's someone that will run you no matter what, like she's bump setting. She, she's going to be really excited to watch and I can't wait to be set by her. She's a legend. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Don't tell anybody else. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Definitely not going to send this out. Um, okay, Veronica Stone, San Diego Mojo, great. She's going to be a star for this team. Amazing conversation, really fun. A- again, everyone, Vias Arena is going to be where their home arena is at. February 23rd is their home opener. Um, their first yeah. game of the year, I believe, is going to be on the road, first couple games of the year. Yeah. Um, but it's going to be super fun. CBS Sports, I believe, is the television partner. Ticket, San Diego Mojo vb.com there's a season ticket deposits that you can place there again all the information is going to be in the description um ronica thank you so much for the time i really appreciate it thank you so much thanks for having me